Abraham, the role of imagination in creation. I'm playing with the idea of imagining my brain cells firing up and lighting up in very good feeling ways. And you've talked about grids, vibrational grids, energetic grids, but there are neural grids. Whenever I think a thought, certain neurons, brain cells light up just like the vibrational grids. And I'm playing with the idea of using my imagination to play with my brain and shape my brain in a better aligned direction. And I find that there's a, like a nutshell there that I want to develop. It's like an acorn. I want to see that develop. Here's something worth thinking about. You know how your engine of your vehicle is doing its thing. You've put fuel in the tank and there's some system that is causing a combustion that is giving propulsion to the whole experience. And while you could study how that's happening and you could even make a little place for yourself under the hood where you're monitoring and being part of the engine process <laughs> usually it's just better to get in your car and go where you want to go mm -hmm. with it and so you used a word here that we are very eager to chew on a little bit and that's that word imagination because imagination image active image unconditional because I'm not looking at something and observing it I'm not looking and observing actually without even knowing it I have found a vibrational stance which is causing the images ah I have found a vibrational stance that is causing the images and I'm receiving the images I'm not imagining I'm allowing myself to be imagined on in so Abraham did you just say I'm not the thinker of my thoughts mm -hmm. you are the achiever of the frequency that allows you to receive and translate the vibration into a thought so Esther was visiting with a friend the other day who is not part of this work she is Esther's hairdresser and so she was talking about some things she sees and Esther was explaining to her Esther said I find this place where I can translate into words and you are finding a place where you are translating into images that's what imagination is now those images come to you from some vibration somewhere if you've been worried about a lot of things if you've been convinced that there's evil in the world if it doesn't matter what it is that you're believing there is a vibration that you're translating into images so what we really want to say is we want to get way down the road to step 12 so that you are consistently in sync with who you really are and then allow yourself to be the receiver of what you're calling imagination which we are calling translating vibration into the pre-steps of what you later will experience as reality does that make sense to you perfect sense great clarity i'm creating fertile ground for my imagination that really is the best way to look at that years ago jerry was he wrote a paper but he was wanting to let a whole body of his work be about turning thoughts to things turning thoughts to things and we want to take that idea further by saying allowing the vibration to become the thought to become the thing you're not turning anything to anything things are just becoming because the law of attraction is making sure of that and when you posture yourself in a way that you allow that so your entire work must be about getting yourself in the receptive mode which just means get happy don't work on your imagination get happy don't try to figure things out get happy don't try to solve the problems of the world ignore the problems of the world or you will not solve them now let's be clear about this you can't really ignore them because they're in your face they're really in your face so you're not really ignoring them but you're not giving so much airtime to them that you're preventing yourself from being the solution to the problems that are showing up feel the difference in all of that so the vibration of the question and the vibration of the answer are very different vibrations so you were somewhere maybe in one of those earlier steps when you ask an important question and launched an important solution into being 
but now where are you in relationship to the solution are you more a vibrational match to the solution or the problem and you can tell by the way you feel because you cannot be both at the same time it's one or the other so that's what we want to say to you decide that your dominant intent always what you mean most to do right here right now whenever it is is to be in the receptive mode which means you're gonna take the path of least resistance from where you are right now so could someone write a book that says people of planet Earth this is the manual of the path of least resistance take these <coughs> steps <laughs> <laughs> take these steps or does everyone stand in their own unique place in relationship to where they are and who they have become and is the path of least resistance something that's moving about for them that they're just finding the vibe of so let's say in the case of our friend we were talking with earlier that he is standing right here right now in a business that is doing well and the path of least resistance for him is for it to do even more wanting his business to grow he has a certain structure of his business right now that cannot right now accommodate his ambitions so rather than all of a sudden going out and inquiring getting his business bigger than his business which is the path of more resistance he instead stands where he is and takes the path that feels the best right here and right now so do I go get a big loan and build a big infrastructure and hire a whole bunch of people only he could know if that's the path of least resistance or the path of more resistance there's no formula that's right for everyone and the formula that feels right for you right now may not be the formula that's right for you as you get down the road a little bit because the path of least resistance keeps shifting because it keeps being the path of least resistance in relationship to where you are and what you now want and where you are and what you now want you see what we're getting at see if we can find another example of this so you're in the living room with your children and they are bickering hardly happens to any of you it's been going on for quite a while it seems like the path of least resistance is to just go in there and knock their heads together <laughs> after all that's what your parents did <laughs> but you don't live in the same environment that you lived in then and so that doesn't quite feel like the path of least resistance and so you think I'm gonna get in this and I'm gonna understand them so you follow what you feel is the path of least resistance because it feels like either knock their heads together or talk with them about it so you go and talk with them about it and what each of them does is volley for their defense so now you're collecting all of this information and now you're trying to sort out who's right and who's wrong in this and suddenly you realize this wasn't your path of least resistance you kind of wish you just knocked their heads together <laughs> but you decided earlier that that wasn't the path of least resistance and so now you're here you're not gonna knock their heads together but also now getting in the middle of this you can feel is not the path of least resistance because it's not getting better they're more defensive everybody's talking louder they want you to be the arbitrator you know you don't create their reality you create your own so now another path of least resistance is sort of lighting up and the thought occurs to you because your desire is strong and you're not too far from it from your alignment maybe I'll just let them work this out maybe I'll let them have the life experience that gives you a feeling of greater ease now the parenting book said never do that the parenting book said never go in and lay down the law and then just walk off but you can feel that you're getting nowhere doing what you're doing and that things are escalating rather than softening and so you decide you're going to take the path of least resistance and so you say to them my tendency is to send you to your room but I've decided instead I'm going to mine <laughs> this is not a punishment to me I'm saving my own life
I can't sort this out for you it's not my job to sort this out for you I don't have enough years left to get to the bottom of what's going on between you guys and so I'm just doing what's best for me and I would encourage you to do that too now that sounds absurd if you've been reading parenting manuals but we want to say to you only what feels best to you is the best path for you and the more you allow yourself to be in the receptive mode to receive the impulse or the inspiration that gives you that feeling of relief the more you will realize that oh there is such a clear path for you and that source has lighted it all up and when you get in the practice of caring about how you feel and reaching for that alignment first because alignment trumps everything what you will begin to discover is that there are not 12 steps there are millions of steps and they will light up just when you need them it is unlikely that the same step that you are taking right now will light up for anybody else at the same moment because your relationship with your own vortex is much more varied than you know you see what you're wanting to impart to yourself and to your clients to your students to your children to everybody through the clarity of your example is I accept the goodness of me and I've decided to let life treat me right now as well as it can I'm in the receptive mode of what's best for me right now what's best for me right now and don't you wish that for everyone that you love don't you want to find some way to help them become consciously aware of what's best for them moment by moment by moment we've enjoyed this interaction a lot good time for a segment of refreshment if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video